Hi everyone, my name is Craig, and if you're watching this video, it's because you're interested in minimizing and simplifying your post-production workflow so that you can maximize your time in your editing software to turn out better quality videos at faster speeds. Uh, spending less time Organizing your media means more time editing, and this will lead to being able to increase your bandwidth on what you can take on as an editor or director, and ultimately uh, make more money because you have a repeatable process that is refined for managing media assets. Maybe you were at a place where you were beginning to shoot more videos or get more clients, and with that comes more and more media assets for you to manage, and it can be overwhelming to be thrusted into the role of producer, director, editor, animator, sound designer, and colorist all at once. And in my experience, the most important thing to be conscious of to minimize stress is file management. Say it with me, file management. Good, you're learning. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through my editing workflow from the moment your SD card is inserted into the camera to exporting the final product. I also highly recommend you purchasing an external hard drive for storing your media so it keeps your computer's internal SSD running as fast as possible. So in this video, I'm gonna assume that uh, you're using an external storage device for your media. Okay. Let's dive in. So the first thing that we're gonna do has to actually deal with our memory card that we're inserting into our camera before our shoot begins. We wanna make sure that that SD card is formatted properly and is a clean card because we wanna keep this process consistent for each and every shoot. And the best way to do that is make sure you have a clean SD card going in to whatever shoot you're starting. You also wanna make sure all of your cameras are synced to the same time and date so your files will always be in the correct sequential order when you're importing your footage. Okay, so after you finish your shoot, it's time to decide where you want your media to live. So we're gonna um, open up the Finder and I'm deciding that we're gonna let it live on this four terabyte April 2019 drive. And for this tutorial, I'm gonna use a wedding shoot that I did in 2019, just because weddings have a lot of different camera angles that we're working with, a lot of media, a lot of times I do both photo and video, and there's just a lot of assets to manage. So it's a really good example of like kind of worst case scenario, if you have this much um, footage and photos to work with, how to organize it all. So we're gonna look at weddings 2019, and we're gonna use Marie and Justin as our example. So the very first thing that you're gonna do is create a new folder, so this would be titled Marie, and Justin tutorial. Okay, um, you would go ahead and you would click this folder and then you're gonna begin creating subfolders within this folder for all of your media. So every single camera that you used, if you used um, audio recorders, if you used a drone, every single asset that you have, you're gonna create a folder for it and then we're gonna import our media to said folders. So I already did this for Marie and Justin, so we're gonna look in this folder and you can see all of our assets. So we used a Sony a6000, a drone. Their wedding included a photo package, so I have a Lightroom catalog and their final Lightroom edits. Music, project files, raw files, video files, and audio files. So you're gonna create a folder for each one of these assets, and then you're gonna begin importing all of your footage or audio into said folder. Okay, now that we've imported all of our footage into the appropriate folders, it's now time to rename all of our files. And the reason that we rename our files is so that we don't have duplicate file names. Sony cameras have an interesting file naming system in which every time you insert a new SD card into the camera for the first time, it's gonna restart the file naming sequence for that SD card. So Sony start at C0001, and if I were to never rename my files, I would have probably at this point over a thousand files with the name C0001. And this is important when it comes to relinking media at a later date. So right here, I'm gonna show you how you can rename a batch edit of files really quickly um, so you don't have to do it individually. So here in this video folder, we can see that all of our files are this generic um, C000 whatever file it is. So. So we're gonna rename all of these files um, so that they are a unique name that no other file in the world has. So we're gonna click on the first file and we're gonna scroll down and hold shift until we hit the very last file. Shift click, that's gonna highlight them all. Then we're gonna right click on our mouse and we're gonna hit rename 156 items. So um, what we're gonna do is select name and index to rename, and I've already come up with a file naming system right here that I'm just gonna drag in. So here's the file naming system that I use for myself. Always the first thing is whatever camera it was shot on. 
underscore whoever was shooting. So in this case, KP, it's Craig Pruitt, underscore whatever the project was. So this is Justin Marie's wedding, underscore the date of the project, underscore. And you're gonna start your file naming sequence at one. So you can see it's underscore one. Once you hit rename, this is gonna rename every single file in the folder so that there's only one file like this in the entire world. Like this file only exists in one place and it's unique to itself. So once we have all of our files renamed, it's time to create a cloned copy of this folder to a second hard drive. The reason we do this is, is for some reason while we're editing our project, our hard drive fails. We need to make sure that we have a backup of all of our data so that we can recover any lost files if necessary. So what I would do in this case is hit Command N on the keyboard to open up a new window. And we're gonna go to our second hard drive. So we're gonna use this Lacey four terabyte hard drive here. And we're gonna title this Weddings 2019. And we're gonna import Justin and Marie's whole folder. This folder is 220 gigabytes. So we're gonna pull that file over here and copy the entire thing. This is obviously gonna take a really long time, so you're just gonna let it sit, go grab yourself some nice coffee, and wait. Okay, once you have a backup of your project, it's time to start setting up your project files in your editing software. So we're gonna go ahead and open up Premiere here. Okay, now it's time to select the destination for our project file. So you're gonna hit Browse, and we're gonna go ahead and select our Weddings 2019 folder, Marie and Justin, and we're gonna hit Project Files, and we're gonna let this be the location for our project. So we're gonna choose Select. We're gonna title this Justin and Marie, and hit OK. Okay, now we have our project set up in Premiere and the next step is going to be to import all of our footage into the software and let it render out. The quickest way to do this is head to the finder and you're gonna find all of your media. So go ahead and go to Weddings 2019 and you're gonna import all of the folders of anything that you need. So for this, we're gonna need the A6000, the drone, any music that we might need. I've already downloaded the music, so we'll go ahead and import it now. All of the video files and the sound and we're just gonna drag them into our software. Okay, all of the footage is finished importing in Premiere. Now it's time to organize our footage inside of the project file itself. So you'll see the file management organization is key to all of this. So we first organize everything in the finder and in the hard drive so that we keep it organized here. Now it's time to organize even further inside of the project software itself. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new bin for footage. Not footage, footage, beautiful. So now we're gonna dra drag in anything that's footage into this folder. So the A6000, boom, boom, boom. I'm command clicking here. That's how I'm able to highlight all those at the same time. The drone is also footage. Now we're gonna create a new bid for sound. Drag those into that same folder. Now we're gonna right click and create a new bin for our sequence. So right click, we're gonna create a new item sequence. And here is where you're gonna decide what frame rate you're gonna let your project be in. And this is heavily gonna depend on what frame rate you shot the project to begin with. So I usually shoot in 24 frames a second. So we're gonna create um, a sequence preset. If you come into digital SLR, you can find a 1080p preset that I use often. And we're just gonna title this footage. Okay, now we have a sequence on our timeline that's 24 frames a second. It created this new sequence titled footage that we're gonna drag into sequences. And that's where that's gonna live for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin with our A camera, which is Video Craig A7 III. And we can see that this first file is a uh, is the bride getting ready. So we're gonna go ahead and create a folder, um, new bin titled Bride Prep. And we're gonna go into this and we're gonna figure out when this bride prep ends. So I can see that all of this footage, and we're gonna go through every single file and know, okay, all of these are gonna go into the bride prep folder. So that's bride prep. This is more, okay, so now we're into groom. So what we're gonna do is create folders for every single one of these scenes. I just call them scenes. So in this, we're gonna have um, the bride getting ready, the groom getting ready, the ceremony, the reception, couple photos, bridal party photos, family photos. So these are all scenes that we're gonna create in our project folder to make sure that we keep everything organized when it comes to timelining the footage. Okay, so I've gone ahead and organized all of the footage into their respective bins. So we can see if we open up Craig's couple footage, this is all footage of just the couple together. 
The same goes for groom prep. All of this is the groom preparing for the wedding day. So everything is organized into their appropriate bin and now it's time to start timelining the footage. So how I begin timelining is I usually do it in order of events occurred. So the first thing that usually occurs at every wedding is the bride getting ready. So I'm gonna go to the first clip of the first thing that happened on that day and we're gonna watch that clip through and we're gonna decide what portion of the clip we want to use. We're gonna hit I on our keyboard to set an endpoint. We're gonna hit play. And I think that's a good stopping point. So we're gonna hit O on our keyboard and then we're gonna hit period on our keyboard, which is gonna automatically place that clip into our timeline of footage. And there you go. There's the first clip. And now you're gonna do this with every single clip. And I've go gone ahead and already done this wedding. So I know that this was my in and out point for this clip right here. And I went ahead put it on the timeline. So I've gone through each and every file from this wedding and made sure that I selected the best parts of each clip to put on the timeline. So now we're to the point where we're gonna begin creating our edit. And what I do here is I create a new sequence for our edit, separate from our sequence of our timelined raw footage. The reason I do this is because I have over an hour's worth of raw footage that I know is not gonna make the final eight minute video. So I wanna keep my final edit separate from my raw footage that I'm gonna pull from to create the edit. So this video is more focused on the editing workflow, not necessarily how I edit. So I'm gonna show you the final edited timeline. This is the final edited timeline for this wedding. So I've showed you how we set up our project files. Now we're gonna show you how to export and make sure that the final export is in a good location. So when we see our final timeline footage, we're gonna zoom in and hit I on the keyboard on the very first frame of the video to set our endpoint of the video. And we're gonna zoom back out and go to the very final frame of the video, which is right here. I even let the audio ring out for a second and hit O. That's gonna set an out point for our video. And this is the only portion of the video we want to export. We're gonna go up to File, Export Media. So I'm gonna select the output name and I'm gonna put it in the folder of Weddings 2019, Marie and Justin. I'm gonna put this in Project Files and we're gonna create a new folder and title it Exports, which I did. And we're gonna let it live here. And so for your export settings, that's gonna depend heavily upon what you told your client you're gonna to deliver to them. So this client was fine with an H.264 codec for the delivery, but you may need to select something like a QuickTime Apple ProRes 422 proxy. This is just entirely dependent on what your client needs to receive and what kind of quality you want to export for them. So for this, we're gonna go ahead and export a .h.264 video we see that the estimated file size is about half a gig, so 562 megabytes, and hit export. That's gonna render out. Okay, the video is finished rendering now, so we're gonna go ahead and find that file. That's gonna be in Project Files, Exports, and here we go. And here is the final film, Marie and Justin's Wedding. Looks beautiful, it's color corrected nice. So now that we've finished the edit, we're gonna actually go back to our SD card that we haven't formatted yet and format that card. The reason why I don't format the card until the project is always finished is because I then have a built-in backup to my backup. If for some reason I lose the footage on the main hard drive and the backup hard drive, I always have the original media stored on the SD card that I didn't format to begin with. So you're gonna wanna build up a bunch of memory cards, whether you're using like XQD or CF cards or even external hard drives for a bigger camera like a RED camera or an Alexa. You want a lot of memory storage so that you're not having to erase the media too soon. I'm a big proponent of keeping a backup to my backup on the original SD cards. If you have to format the SD cards, that's okay, but you must have that second backup on a different hard drive. And the reason why this is also important to me to manage your files this way is because you need to be able to revisit a project that you did six months ago or even a year ago and have the assurance that your project is gonna be in good integrity and all of your files are gonna be recoverable and the software is gonna be able to find that file in a specific location at any point in time. A quick story about why that's important. In September of 2019, I shot a concert for Post Malone in Portland, Oregon. About six months later, the concert promoter Live Nation contacted me to get that edit and to revise a few things about the video so that they could use that footage for a promo for the second leg of the runaway tour that was happening the next winter. With Sway Lee and Tyler Yahweh. If I didn't organize my files the way that I did, 
when they sent me that request, I would not have been able to go back and make those adjustments to the video, which led to my work being posted on one of the biggest concert promoters in the United States. Real quick, I'll just show you where that was. If we hit the Runaway Tour, September 2019, here's that project file. I'm able to open it right here. It's opening up. And this is, this is why it's so important. I edited this promo on an older version of Premiere, but watch this. If I just hit this okay button, it's gonna automatically locate all the media and it's gonna relink everything perfectly. And there we go, just like that. The, all of the media is relinked and the edit is right here. We can look over here and see that I do the same thing. Here's Post Malone's performance. Here's Post Show backstage. Here's Tyler backstage. Here's Tyler performance. Here's all of our music, here's our assets. If you wanna land high paying clients, they expect you to have your stuff together and to be organized and professional with your file management. In the near future, I'm gonna put out some editing breakdowns on videos like this Post Malone edit or an NF concert or a Lecrae concert um, so you can see my editing process. But this is more my file management organization process that I wanted to show you today because I think it'll help you create a clean and consistent and efficient workflow for you to manage your files. And I hope that this video was informative to you when you learned something new. It also really helps if you like and subscribe to my channel because I'm gonna be putting out a lot more videos like this in the near future. So I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch and I'll see you in the next video. Much love.